a wonderful thought, isn't it? How beautiful heaven must be. You know, the thing about it is, we don't, uh, we're not questioning, we're not asking uh, if it is beautiful. We know that it is. What we don't know yet is just how beautiful it is. Amen. We, we, we're not, we're not uh, wondering, you know, wondering about just, uh, uh, just whether it is a glorious place or not. No, we know it's a glorious place. The only question is, is this how glorious? I believe the Bible tells us, it teaches us really that it be beyond our imagination, beyond our comprehension, really, uh, what God has prepared uh, for us. And uh, so if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know you're looking forward to that place, that beautiful place called uh, heaven. Well, if you have your Bible open to Isaiah chapter number 46, Isaiah chapter 46, we're continuing on studying uh, together here in our church on uh, Sunday evenings and also Wednesday evenings. Uh, uh, preaching verse by verse through uh, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And so we've been doing that for a while. We're continuing on. We've made it to chapter 46. And so I want to look this evening at verse 1 down through verse number 7 uh, for our study together uh, tonight. And, uh, and, and I want to look at this in, in the light of a, it's going to be a contrast that we're going to be seeing here uh, in the text. And, and, and I chose to title the message tonight, How Firm a Foundation. You really won't see the, uh, the thought of that until we get later on into, uh, into one of the points of, of the message. But, uh, but that's the thought that just kind of jumped out to my, uh, to my thoughts and my heart as I've studied this over the past uh, a few, uh, few days, over, the, over this past week or so, uh, studying through Isaiah. And so chapter 46, verse 1, Isaiah the prophet writes, Bell boweth down, Nebo stoopeth. Their idols were upon the beast and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaded. They are a burden to the weary beast. They stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are borne by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age I am he, and even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry, and will deliver you. To whom will ye liken me, and make me equal, and compare me, that we may be like? They lavish gold out of the bag, and weigh silver in the balance, and hire a goldsmith, and he maketh it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him and set him in his place, and he standeth uh, from his place. Shall he not remove? Yea, one shall cry unto him, yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for the reading of the word of God this evening, the opportunity to study your word together. And once again, we would ask, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, that by the preaching of your word and the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you'd help us. And, and Lord, just lead us and guide us, guide our thoughts. Uh, Lord, help us to see what, uh, what you would have us to see. Help us to learn what you want us to learn. Help us to really know what, what you want us to realize uh, this evening. And we pray that you'd speak to hearts. We pray that you'd speak to others, Lord, that may would catch uh, this message online at some point and, and, and see the video and, and hear the preaching. And Lord, we pray you'd speak to their hearts. And Lord, we pray for anyone that may be unsaved, anyone that may be lost and not ready to meet you, Lord. We pray for their souls. We pray that even in these last days, Lord, that, uh, that they would turn to Christ and be saved before it's too late. So we do pray for souls to be saved. And Lord, we pray that you would change their lives. And, and Lord, that you'd send us revival. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Uh, I mentioned to you that we're looking at somewhat of a contrast. And I think that's what we've got here. And you see that especially in the beginning of the chapter there. And, and verse 1 and verse number 2, uh, as the section of Scripture begins, is a contrast of Babylon's idols and Israel's God. 
as, as the false gods of Babylon. And, and uh, we, we can see that, that, that they are disgraced and that they are destroyed and, and they're carried away captive. But the God of Israel stands faithful and firm and is never removed. And so that's why I want to call it a contrast because certainly uh, it's, it is no comparison, amen. There's no comparison between the two. The Bible is contrasting them here. In verse number nine, verse number nine in the, in the chapter, uh, God says, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. And, and some of the things that we can see here, I think is somewhat like the contrast that Jesus makes of those who hear him and, and build their lives upon him uh, contrasted with those who will refuse to believe and refuse to trust him. And he gives us this in, somewhat, in, in a parable over in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, and you'll remember this, beginning with verse number 24. Matthew 7, verse 24. He said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these, thing, these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, notice, which built his house upon a, a rock, and the rain descended, and floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26, And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. I think there's a contract, there's a picture of that contrast between Babylon's idols and Israel's God. Because Babylon's idols is just like the man that builds his, wife, his house on sand instead of a rock. It has no foundation. And when trouble comes, when the rain comes, when the flood comes, and no foundation underneath that house, nothing but sand, and sinking sand, by the way, uh, then, then there's just no hope for that, uh, for that house. And, uh, but the one that built his house on a solid foundation, built his house on a rock, let the, the, the storms come, and the wind and the, and the rain comes, and the floods come. And when that storm passes through, guess what? That house still standing, amen. Because Jesus says standing on a rock. Well, he says that's the way it is with those who will stand with him and believe upon him and trust him and build their lives. The houses here are really examples or illustrations of the man's life. Building your life upon Jesus Christ is like building that house on that solid rock for a foundation. But building your life apart from Jesus and refusing to believe on him, refusing to trust him, refusing his gospel, refusing his invitation to come to him and be saved. When you reject him, it's just like you've built your life on sinking sand. And, and when the storms of this life comes, you're not going to have any protection uh, at all. That's the way it was between Babylon's idols and Israel's uh, God. The contrast between the two. Uh, with Israel's God, there's a firm foundation. With uh, Babylon's idols, there's no foundation at all. And so let's look at it this way. First of all, verse 1 and verse number 2. Uh, the failure of Babylon's idols. Isaiah 46, verse 1, verse 2. The failure of Babylon's idols will also bring in with this verse 6 and verse number 7. And so here, notice in verse 1, Baal boweth down. Nebo uh, stupid. Uh, this Baal and Nebo, understand these were names of, of, of false gods that were worshipped by the Babylonians. Now, just want you to understand, uh, they, they believed in many false gods. This is just two of them. Uh, they had others, like a lot of what we refer to, what you call the heathen world in those days, and the heathen world still today. Uh, there are people around the world today that are worshiping idols, worshiping false gods. They, they even got, they got names for them. Uh, they've, got, uh, they've got things that they go through, rituals and so forth, uh, for the different so-called gods and the different names. And you think of religion, especially like the Hindus, where there's, uh, I'm told it's like in the millions of different gods with different names 
uh, that those people would choose to bow down to and, and, to, and to worship. Well, Babylon might not have been a million, but there was, there, there was many more than one, but these are two of them. Uh, that is named in the Bible. They called him Baal and they called him uh, Nebo. And, and, and then notice as the verse continues where it says that uh, uh, Baal bath down and Nebo stoopeth. Their, their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaded. And they were a burden to the, uh, to the weary beasts. They stooped, they bowed down together. They could not deliver the burden but themselves are gone into captivity. And so notice this about Babylon's idols. First of all, what we just read, verse one, verse two, you'll find out there that they cannot deliver. Can you say amen? They can't, they can't deliver. They, they, can't, they can't even do anything for themselves. These Babylonian idols uh, were themselves carried into captivity. Uh, they couldn't even deliver themselves. And this is referring to what Isaiah is referring to here is what we've already been studying somewhat about how that God had said through his prophet that he would deliver his people Israel out of Babylonian captivity. And he's going to do that by raising up a man by the name of Cyrus who'd be the, uh, who would be the Persian uh, king uh, that would conquer Babylon and actually, they would take Babylon into captivity. Uh, Babylon, who took uh, Judah into captivity, eventually is going to go into captivity themselves. And, and it tells us how that uh, their idols are going to be carried off. They're going to load them up on their, in their wagons. They're going to load them up on their beasts. They're going to load them idols that they worship. All these out, Baal and Nebo, they're going to take Baal and Nebo. Uh, the, the great so-called gods of Babylon. And they're going to load them up on a beast, load them up in, in a wagon. Uh, and they're going to they're sit, sit those idols, sit those statues in there. And guess what? They're, they're going to haul them off into captivity. And those, and those two, Baal and Nebo, have no power at all to deliver themselves from going into captivity. They just, they just cannot do it. In Jeremiah chapter number 50, Jeremiah uh, chapter 50 and verse 1 and verse number 2. Jeremiah will tell of this. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1, verse 2. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of, of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. And now watch this, verse 2 of Jeremiah 50. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard, publish and conceal not, say, Babylon is taken, Baal is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces, her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. I, I, Jeremiah said that's what's going to take place. That's going, what's going to happen. And he tells about how it's going to happen there in Jeremiah chapter number 50. And so, but the point to make here is the failure of Babylon's uh, idols. That, that name in Jeremiah, Merodach, that is another name of false god. And uh, But I have read where it is actually could be another name that was used for the same uh, so-called god of, of Baal and so forth. I think there. I think when you got false gods, when you got idols, and we got several of them, you know, they're just all going to mix up in a pile. <laughs> and, and that's what you're seeing with, with Jeremiah. And, but the thing is, they cannot deliver. They cannot deliver themselves at all. They're going, they're going into captivity. And not only can they not deliver, but they cannot save. Isaiah chapter 46, if you look at verse 6 and verse number 7, these idols, they, they, they can't save any, any, anyone. Uh, verse 6, they lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith, make it a god. They fall down, yea, they worship. And, and notice, they bear him upon the shoulder. They, they carry him. Imagine that. You, you got a God that you fall down and worship, but you got to carry him around with you. You got to carry him. Uh, they bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him. They set him in his place. He standeth from his place. Now look at this. Shall he not remove? Yea, one shall cry to him, yet can he not answer, nor save out of his trouble. They cannot deliver and they cannot save. You know, the thing about it is idols... Uh, can't save themselves 
And they can't save themselves. They can't save the, uh, those that worship them. Amen. They can't save themselves. They can't save anybody else. Over in, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 115, uh, Psalm 115, and uh, reading, uh, beginning with verse number one, I, I'll read, I believe, down through verse number eight, Psalm 115, verse one. Uh, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. And then look at this. Uh, their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they, uh, they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusteth in them. Amen. They cannot save anyone. Can't save a thing. Over in uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter number 10. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. And uh, uh, verse number 1. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, the Bible says, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fashion it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, uh, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. They can't do a thing, you see. It's just uh, wood covered with gold, or, or maybe something fashioned out of silver, or fashioned out of gold, or fashioned out of stone, or fashioned out of... Iron, but the thing about it is, it's all something that's been fashioned out of man's hand. Uh, they call them gods, but they are no gods. Amen. The failure of Babylon's idols. But look with me tonight. The key thing I think for us to be reminded of is the faithfulness of Israel's God. The faithfulness of Israel's God. You can see that in our text in Isaiah 46, verse 3. Verse 4 and verse number 5. Notice with me verse number 3. Or Isaiah says, Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. Uh, can I say this about verse number 3? How faithful is our God. Can you say amen? How faithful is our God. You see, the God of Israel is not helpless like the, like the idols of Babylon or any other uh, nation of the world. Uh, in, in, in his strength, in his strength, God has sustained and God will sustain uh, Israel even when they're helpless. And he'll sustain them through every circumstance, through every trial, through every tribulation, uh, through every problem. You know, the faithfulness of God toward his people has really been an emphasis in the Bible all the way through. Have you notice that? I mean, God was faithful towards his, his, uh, his people and, and is faithful to his Old Testament people, the nation of Israel. And, and, and then we can, we can bring ourselves into this because he's faithful to his New Testament people, the church. He say, amen. Have you found God to be faithful in your own life? Amen. He is faithful. Our, our God is faithful. Let me give you some verses. You don't have to take time to try to find them. I, I've got them uh, here uh, together. Let me just read these uh, for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful by whom you are called under the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm looking at the New Testament now. I'm looking at God's faithfulness. How faithful is our God? Not only the God of Israel, but the God of the church tonight, our God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Therefore hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer to be not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God is faithful. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. How faithful is our God. Amen. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Amen. How faithful is our God. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, we could go on and on and on and, and understanding just how faithful is our God. I would suppose that every one of us could, give, could bear testimony tonight of how God has been faithful in your life. How, the, how he has been always there when you needed him. Always just a prayer away. He said, he said, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. When we're weak, he is strong. Amen. And he's always with us and always uh, uh, faithful to us. He is faithful to his people. How faithful is our God. And then in verse number two, or verse number four, in verse number four, uh, I see this uh, concerning the faithfulness of, of Israel's God. Not only how, how faithful is our God, but how firm a foundation. How firm a foundation in verse number four. Uh, now, now, I want you to notice this and where it says, and even to your old age. And verse number three, God said through his prophet Isaiah concerning Israel, he says the, to the and to the remnant of the house of Israel, he, he says that they were, he says which are born by me from the belly, which were carried from the womb. That means from the very beginning, from the very time of their birth, from the time of the beginning and all the way through their life to the end. Uh, someone said it like this: from the womb to the tomb, <laughs> from 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 birth to death, from the beginning to the end. Uh, God was faithful to Israel and, and you'll find out that he'll be just as faithful to you tonight. He'll be just as faithful to us. He'll be just as faithful to his church. You remember how Jesus said uh, when he told Peter upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, my friend the church is going to win. I've read the end of the book and we're on the winning side tonight. Yeah. It looks tough. It looks hard now uh, in this these last days that we're living in right now. But we are on the victory side because God is with us and because our God is just as faithful to us as he was faithful to his Old Testament uh, people, uh, Israel. And so it's from the womb to the tomb. And he said in verse 4, then even to your old age, even to your old age, I am he. And even the whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. Uh, grab your hymn book. I'm not going to sing, but I want you to see this with your own eyes uh, because I never really uh, uh, knew about it until I was studying uh, this this week or never never remembered it, never thought about it. But I've always loved that hymn, page 153 in your hymn book, page 153. I've always loved that hymn, I'll, How Firm a Foundation. If you've ever listened to the radio broadcast of, of uh, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, Through the Bible, and uh, a wonderful program on, on the radio. I enjoy it. And uh, you, you'll, record, you'll know that hymn, How Firm a Foundation, which is the theme song for, for that radio program. And, and so you see it here in our hymn book, in hymn number 153. What I want you to see uh, that I've just learned about recently, really, is that Isaiah chapter 46 and verse number 4 that we're looking at tonight, it is considered really to be the basis uh, for a, a stanza or a verse there in this familiar old hymn, How Firm a Foundation. And it is verse number four in your hymn book. Look at it. Now let me go back. I'm going to read uh, verse four. Isn't that interesting? Verse four in Isaiah 46. It's verse four uh, in the hymn or stanza four in the hymn also. But Isaiah 46, verse 4, let's, let's re I'll read it again, and then we'll look at, at your hymn book. Verse 4 in Isaiah 46, And even to your old age I am he, and even to whore hairs will I carry you. 
I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. I don't know about you, but I'm finding out that a promise like that is a great blessing and it's becoming more and more of a blessing to me as every day goes by. Amen. And uh, it's a great blessing even to your old age. Thank God that he stays with us even to our old age. Amen. Now look at the, look at the hymn in your hymn book. Uh, stanza number four. E'en down to old age, all my people shall prove my sovereign, uh, e e uh, my sovereign, eternal, unchangeable love. And when hoary hair shall their uh, shall their templates adorn, like lambs they shall still in my bosom be born. And if you get the tune, you know, in your mind, you'll see how that how that fits. I love that. And it fits just exactly with what we have in, in the scriptures, in the Bible. Uh, how faithful is our God. And he is so faithful uh, that he gives us a firm foundation. He is our foundation. Can you say amen? Uh, and, and, and his word is our foundation. In Ephesians chapter number uh, 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19 and verse number 20. Uh, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And listen, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. How Can I say it again? How firm a foundation that the church sits on tonight, amen. The foundation that you and I stand on uh, tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. I don't know about you, but I think it's such a wonderful promise that even to our old age, even to your old age, God says, I am He. And He says, even to the poor heads, uh, will I carry you. He says, I've made, I'll bear, even I will carry, and I will deliver you. God says, He's going to do that for us even in our old age tonight. Why? Because it's a firm foundation. It's a sure foundation. I like that other hymn that says, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. That's the faithfulness of our God. That's the faithfulness of God. And we saw the failure of Babylon's idols, but then in contrast to that, you have the faithfulness of Israel's God and the faithfulness of our God and the firm foundation that, uh, that the Lord has laid down for us to build our lives on. Amen. Uh, what a wonderful God that He is. But then notice in, in, uh, back in Isaiah 46, and let me give you this to, to close, and we'll look at uh, some other uh, verses just quickly as well. But in the, considering the faithfulness of, of God, how faithful is our God, how firm a foundation. Number three, how can you compare? How in the world could you compare uh, Israel's God with Babylon's idols? There's no comparison. There's no comparison at all. Look at that verse five. God gives the challenge himself. To whom will ye liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? I mean, he challenges us. You tell me, who can you compare to me? That's what God says. There's no answer to that, is it? Because there is no comparison and it is absolutely foolish for anyone to try. Psalm 113. Psalm 113 and verse number five. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? Psalm 145 and verse number three. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Let's finish with the New Testament. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. And I'm gonna read from verse 33 through verse 36. Romans chapter 11, verse 33, the apostle Paul writes, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed recompense to him again for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever amen 
That's how faithful our God is. And there is no comparison. No comparison to, uh, to Babylon's idols. No comparisons to this, the, this, world, this world's uh, false gods. There's one God, one Savior, one Lord, uh, one mediator between man and God, and that's the man Christ Jesus, who came to this earth, the Son of God, made into human flesh, that he would have a body to be nailed to a cross, that he'd have blood that would be shed as the propitiation and the payment for man's sins. And there as our sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, he would be the Lamb of God, which would take away the sins of the world. Uh, that's how great our God is. And my friend, if you don't know him, you can know him if you'll trust Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you'll trust him, if you'll trust Jesus, then you can know God and you can have your sins forgiven. You can have eternal life. And you can say, how great is our God. And you can have a firm foundation to build your life, to build your house on. And our prayer at Grace Baptist Church is that, that if you haven't already, that you'll do just that and you'll do it right away. Let's pray. Let's go ahead and stand again and we'll pray, church. Lord, thank you for the word of God. And thank you for the opportunity to study your word together uh, this evening. And Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your firm foundation. Lord, may it be that we will always look to you and never stray. And Lord, we thank you for your promise that even into our old age, that you are faithful. And Lord, that you'll carry us. You'll bear us in, in your own arms. You, you, you'll, you, you, you'll, you'll carry us like, like, like the hymn, like the writer of the hymn said, like, like a lamb uh, in your bosom. You'll carry us. And Lord, you've made that promise. Lord, we pray for those tonight that do not know that promise. They don't, it's not been applied to their lives because they've not trusted Christ. We pray that you would speak to their hearts. Lord, draw them to yourself that they might be saved. We'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's sing together as Brother Tim leads us. Page 277. 